Hey Geminis, and welcome to your October 2019 general tarot forecast. This is Sky here to give you guys hopefully another amazing reading for your month ahead. And what an incredible, um, exhilarating, insightful month October can be for everyone. I hope you guys are feeling great. Let's really set a great space for this reading and a great intention for understanding more about um, Gemini's path and Gemini's experience through the month. Um, I've already pre-shuffled your cards, and I will just be uh, doing the typical spread that I do, which will be each week, along with a central theme. So through seeing those archetypes that come up, we will get a general idea of what you're facing this month. Um, before I get too far into it, though, um, thank you guys so much for going over to Amazon and pre-ordering my book, Moon Symbols, An Astrological Guide to Healing Your Moon. It is officially out on the upload date of this video, which is the 23rd of September, and I was so blessed to see that it actually hit number one in new releases. Um, so if you guys haven't been able to check that out yet, I hope that you will. Um, the charts really speak for themselves, themselves, and I think that uh, the book is really helpful and really great, and it's been an honor to, re to uh, write and release. Um, so I hope you guys get to check that out. Um, also, private readings will probably fill up quite soon for October. Um, I know all the September slots are full, so if you wanted a private reading, you can jump over um, to my website, which is in the description box too. So yeah, anyway... Um, as I was shuffling the cards for Gemini, um, I felt that October was a month of um, revealing insights for you, revealing the nature of other people, revealing your passions, revealing what you want, as it seems like um, my gut instinct was saying that Gemini is seeing something new, seeing something unexpected, and seeing something that kind of diverts their attention away from what they'd been kind of expecting before and what they had been really connected to. So I think that October for you does maybe um, show a loss or show a show an ending of some kind where maybe you didn't expect to stop something or you didn't expect for something to fall through. But through the way that you detour off from that, you come into a really nice um, expression of power, a really nice new beginning that you couldn't have expected. So that's what I was feeling as I was meditating on your energy. Um, I was also feeling that there is like pruning to do. Pruning was the word that I heard. Um, we just came from Virgo season and that's what Virgo season is all about, um, which is cutting away the dead foliage and letting go of what needs to um, complete. And we've just come past equinox. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we've gone into the darker time of the year, which symbolically represents a time of um, of endings, of sunset, of exhale, and, you know, looking deep within, going deeper, and then rising back to the surface later. So that, to me, feels to be Gemini's main challenge for the month of October, is allowing the sun to set on certain things, uh, diving deep, finding what they're made of, finding what they want to really go back to the surface with, and then actually going back to the surface. So that's what I uh, channeled through for Gemini. Um, anyway, as I said, I've already pre-shuffled, so I'm going to cut the cards for you, and we'll get straight into your tarot reading. Um, I just want to see general readings for, uh, general energies for Gemini and some archetypes relating to the path they're going through in October. Okay, let's see what the first week has for you, Gemini. Week number one in October, you have Seven of Swords. That's been coming up a lot this month. Rooted down by Queen of Swords. So, um, discretion. That's what I get from those two energies together. Implementing and employing positive self-healing discretion. Um, so who has made it clear that they're not out for your best interests in your life? Who has been um, sucking up your resources or been a bit of a parasite or a bit of a leech? I do feel like these people are around you. Um, for the other signs who have gotten Seven of Swords this month, to me it has um, felt like more of, um, let's see, turn the light on here. It's felt more like um, carrying too many things or having too many sharp um, experiences around too many sharp circumstances. But for you, Gemini, this to me feels like another person, somebody who might be trying to take advantage of you, and you're going to see that clearly, and you've got to um, employ discretion about it. I sense you to be this Queen of Swords energy, and you are um, seeing clearly the way that other people are maybe taking advantage or using your time up or using your resources up, and you've got to at least draw a boundary and uh, communicate. Again, the Swords court cards are about masterful communication. They're about um, uh, communicating powerful things. So Queen of Swords will powerfully communicate to these types of people, you know, maybe an ultimatum, you know, stop 
doing this or or I will move along. I will go somewhere else. I will do something else. And I think that maybe an ultimatum is coming in the first week, either for you or to others from you. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see what's coming up in the second week to get some more clarification on that. Week number two in October, you have three of wands rooted down by three of swords reversed. So two, three minor arcana cards upright and reversed. Um, three numerologically is... Um, is an interesting number because it it's a bit of a discordant number. So the three, the fives, the sevens, the nines are all kind of a little bit dodgy at times. Um, and three oftentimes deals with bringing something in or wanting to bring something into the, to our lives or our experiences that has a bit of an unexpected tone to it. Um, so I think that something unexpected comes in the second week of October. Um, you've been wanting to bring something in. You've been wanting something new in your life. You've been wanting some kind of new validation or, um, what I'm feeling is like a very heart centered, like connecting point. So maybe new intimate experiences, wanting a new sense of like romantic connection to other people, um, or wanting like closure. Even it could be for some of you. Perhaps somebody has turned their back on you as well. Three of wands for me, oftentimes, is um, a signal that someone has turned their back. Uh, a lot of people have a very positive interpretation for Three of Wands. To me, it is a more discordant card like the Three of Swords. Um, I don't interpret Three of Wands typically from the perspective of this person here, um, you know, looking off into new horizons, looking off into new avenues, you know, feeling very like, like, wow, I could do anything, sky's the limit. That's not typically how it presents to me. To me, it presents from the perspective of the camera or from the perspective of the person looking at someone with their back turned to them. So it can sometimes for me denote somebody, um, perhaps Gemini, you in this case, really focusing your attention and your energy onto something that is not acknowledging you or something that is not um, giving you credit or giving you what you deserve. And that is confusing because you want it. There's something that you want really badly about this person, this thing, this experience, whatever it is, but it's not quite acknowledging you. So the second week of October becomes about um, upping your standards, maybe, um, about um, not settling for this type of behavior and about moving forward and starting to pursue something that gives you a better sense of wellness or a better sense of you know, creative channel, because oftentimes when we're a little bit hooked on somebody or attached to somebody and we don't need to be, it's because there's a void or because um, we've not found something that we want to pursue so strongly that is innately ours. So we feel discouraged and we want to distract ourselves by um, having relationships or by having, you know, um, fun, comfy, like loving experiences. And there's nothing wrong with those experiences, but they need to be with the right people and they don't need to be out of desperation. So you are... Uh, very directly making sure that it's not in that week. So week number three of October, the chariot rooted down by Ace of Cups reversed. So yeah, I'm thinking that maybe some of you have gone through a breakup or some of you are um, disconnecting from like a very emotionally inspired path that you were on for a long time. Um, it's either like a breakup with a person or a breakup with a goal. Um, there is a ending there is an ending for you in the month of October, Gemini. And that is so beautiful because it's the best time of the year, you know, especially third week of October, we get into Scorpio time. This is the penultimate energy of endings. You know, you can channel this energy and mold this momentum into something that really benefits you endlessly in the future. Um, again, by having an ending here, by accepting, by finding acceptance, really, it's about accepting what just is not full of energy anymore, you can then take the energy that you are bestowed just by being a living being and start to channel that into something very lucrative or very fruitful for you. And I think that you're, again, determining what that is. Discernment, 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 discretion. These are the things that I'm hearing for Gemini this month. This isn't a month where you're flying by the seat of your pants or where you're just spontaneously going here and there. Again, Jupiter is in your opposite sign of Sagittarius, which is encouraging you to do that. It's encouraging you to kind of um, live every day like it's your last, you know, happy-go-lucky. That will be better next month and then for a bit of December. In this month of October for you, Gemini, because perhaps maybe the summer also looked a lot like that, it's more about... Um, 
it's more about taking that creative burst of Jupiter and Sagittarius versus just living every single day in a sort of like um, sparkling haze, I want to say. Um, that's not so much what Gemini needs this month. It needs uh, routine, regiment, and uh, the allowance of itself to create and to, you know, do these really big things. Like, that needs to be a thing for Gemini. Really big, better, expansive, abundant horizons. That's beautiful. But you won't accomplish that either if you're just moving through in, like, a sparkly haze. Like, you won't, you'll just kind of exist in this kind of neutrality or this, like, um this uh, void space, which again, don't let it freak you out. Most of the signs are dealing with this in some kind of way, especially the mutable signs after we went through September with those big, you know, Neptune and Pisces, Jupiter and Sag, Virgo stellium, what I called the origami signature configurations that really, you know, um, changed the lives of most mutable signs, Virgo, Gemini, Pisces, and Sag. Um, so it is what it is. And that's a good it's a good thing for Gemini always to come back on, like simplicity, like it is what it is, you know, this situation is that, so now I do this, like try to not get all caught up in turmoil. I see a bit of turmoil in this reading, one, two, three, four, turmoil cards, but luckily I also see some really, really good judgment and catalyzation too, Queen of Swords and the Chariot, both really good for making a change and for getting behind the momentum and writing it very good. Week number four. Death. Oh my gosh. I love it. Death rooted down by six of swords. That's beautiful. I love this for you guys. And if you remember with the intuitive energies, that's those, both of those cards kind of um, are reminiscent of what we were talking about then because um, those, those energies were all about transition and all about endings sunset you know there is um sunset in the death card if we couldn't see the sun is setting or is it rising it could be either one that's because inherently they're the same energy line um endings and beginnings go through the same energy um and give us the same type of um catalyst feeling within our body so that means that by going through this loss you are inevitably going to get a gain. You know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's a great thing to adapt into your into your spirituality um, because through that you can see, oh no, I've gone through this trauma or oh no, I've gone through this difficulty. That inherently means I've got to have a really, really great rise coming on too. And I like Six of Swords in this position too because to me that says uh, sailing into smoother waters in November. So October sort of becomes a time of facing the truth facing the reality, facing the people who shouldn't be around anymore, um, deciding not to face people whose backs are turned on you, um, facing the heartbreak and why you're feeling a bit emotionally turbulent, making changes, implementing discretion, transforming, and sailing into smoother waters. I mean, that's pretty much it for you, Gemini. That, that's the kind of the uh, ultimate order that you go through. And if that isn't power, and if that isn't useful and a great ride. I don't know what is. It, again, it might not feel like the most, um, you know, easy or relaxed time, but it's through this that you start to generate that, that positive sparkly haze, that positive, um, comfortable sense of rest and regeneration. All right. So short and simple this month for you, Gemini. Oh, I've almost forgotten to give you a central theme. That would have been bad. It is the star reversed. That's okay. Even though it's reversed, um, to me that says that you see what isn't healthy. Because the star is all about health. It's all about um, vulnerability, the things that we can't cover up, the things that we can't um, resist, or um, the, the vulnerability that we can't hide. So it's reversed. So you see the ways that you've had to hide your vulnerability. You see the ways you've had to deny your health or deny your authenticity. So this entire month becomes about readapting your authenticity and readapting your vulnerability and becoming healthier. So stay by water. Lots of water energies coming up for you. Um, stay by water, uh, be well hydrated, try to eat alkaline foods, um, and that will help a lot. You know, really focus on that endocrine health. That's a good thing for this month. And you will come through this month with an, an incredible oncoming November. 
All right, Gemini, it's been an honor to be here and an honor to be reading for you this month. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button below if you're new and check out my new ebook, Moon Symbols, an astrological guide to healing your moon. It is charting on Amazon and I am so grateful to you all who have been able to pre-order that and order that today. Um, again, private readings are available, social media is available below, I have guided meditations, articles, and a lot of different things if you are wanting to sort of dive into your spiritual experience. So thank you all so much for being here and we will be talking soon in November, but I do post videos every week here on YouTube as well on Fridays. All right, Geminis, good luck with it all. We will be talking soon. Bye.